Hey, I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to share with you some really encouraging words from 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Uh, Paul had been talking to them about the difference between the new covenant and the old. And oh, a few devotionals back I shared with you from that. But later in the chapter, um, he continues to share the analogy of how um, the glory of the old covenant caused uh, a veil to have to be placed over Moses's face, but the new covenant is even more glorious. And then he said, you know, the, the veil remains over the, the Jewish people because they were trying to establish uh, a righteousness uh, apart from Christ, a self-righteousness. And so as long as we're trying to make ourselves right or maintain a rightness with God apart from him, um, it blinds us to the beauty of the new covenant and the glory which is attributed to Jesus himself and not to ourselves. And so he says uh, here uh, in verse number um, 14, he says, but their minds were hardened for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And so, what a beautiful reminder for us that, you know, you can read the scriptures and uh, you can memorize the scriptures and you can kind of use them to ha uh, as a hammer to, to try and uh, get everyone to conform to your point of view. But he's saying that's, that means there's a veil. You're not really seeing it. Whether you're reading Old Testament scriptures or New Testament scriptures, when your heart is hardened to the grace of God, when your mind is stuck in an old covenant pattern of performing for God, uh, when you are resistant to the absolute necessity of the grace of God, before you come to the place where you recognize the insufficiency of self-sufficiency, it's just you're stuck. There's a veil that blinds you from seeing it. It's a hard heart. But when you turn to Christ, the veil is removed. And all of a sudden, the scriptures come alive and you see the depths of the meaning. You see the grace of God in the old and in the new. You begin to see who God really is. And the beauty of that is, he says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's joy. There's peace, there's love, there's kindness, there's gentleness, there's goodness, there's self-control. And listen, if there isn't real freedom, real liberty, it's not the Spirit of God. It comes through Christ and he takes the veil away. And so let Jesus just remove everything that is hindering you from experiencing true freedom. Anything that might be a veil covering because his purpose in your life and in my life is that we would be experiencing our transformation into his image. Our spirits, when we turn to Christ and put our trust in him, they're alive and completely transformed. But our attitudes and actions and uh, things like that, they're a process of transformation. It's just similar to our sanctification. Our spirit is sanctified the moment we believe. 
our attitudes and actions are being sanctified. And so our transformation is being in process. So don't allow yourself to get stuck and say, okay, uh, I've got my ticket to heaven and I'm good to go. No, let there be a hunger for ever experiencing greater freedom. What does that mean? It does, greater freedom isn't me doing whatever I want. That's actually the opposite of but bondage. The greater freedom is to know liberty, freedom from the bondage of sin, freedom from my selfish impulses, my self-seeking desires, all the things that bring heartache into my life. Freedom to experience Christ who is my life, living his life through me, transformed into the same image. This comes from the Lord. So when I recognize that he is the Lord, the one who rules and reigns over me, the one who is my life, I should be hungry, and I hope you hunger with me, that those who are interacting with us are ever more experiencing Jesus, his love, his joy, his peace, his gentleness, his kindness, his goodness, and self-control. Because if it isn't that kind of freedom, that expression of Jesus, it's not the Spirit of Christ, and it's not freedom. We have been set free, free from our anger, free from our hostilities, free from our hurts, free from our pains, to be transformed into vessels who experience his love, live in his love, and love each other the same way. That's good news. And I hope that it encourages you and maybe send it on to someone else and encourage them. Have a great day. I love you.